C'est si bon de partir n'importe où. Pas de suivre dessous en chantant tes chansons. C'est si bon de se dire des mots doux, d'être petit rien du tout, mais qui en disent long. Welcome to Iron Horse Vineyards. My name is Sofian Himer. I'm the new winemaker here. Um, looking forward to showing you guys around the winery today and kind of showing you guys what we've been doing um, the last couple weeks. Um, as you can see behind me, there's a bunch of barrels. Today we are topping off all our Pinot Noir, uh, making sure all the barrels are full, a bi-weekly process to make sure that there's no oxygen getting in the wine and keeping that wine fresh for you guys. Um, we're looking to put in a bottle here in the next month or two and get it out to you guys as soon as possible. Um, also be showing you some of the things that we're doing around the winery as far as the sparkling wine and, and um, what, what's keeping us busy during these times. So follow me. So all the magic starts, you know, in the vineyard. Uh, can't make good wine without good grapes and here at Iron Horse we're fortunate enough to uh, grow our own grapes so we're 100 percent estate fruit which is amazing because we can control what we're doing in the vineyard and um, make sure that the vines are um, treated with the utmost care to produce the amazing sparkling wines and still wines that we do um, so and it's a gorgeous view uh, on a daily basis uh, just seeing everybody's faces here um, we can't wait for you guys to be be back So when harvest time comes, um, here's our press pad, our two presses. Um, so the vinification process starts here. Uh, we bring in our grapes, we press them. Each uh, pressing cycle is around five hours. And the reason being is it's very gentle, gentle on the grapes, on whole cluster um, grapes uh, to extract the best juice without getting any bitterness um, is, is the goal and what we achieve here. Um, after that, the juice is then settled and then we'll start first fermentation in our cellar and um, do everything that we need to do to, in order to make a base wine. So a base wine for sparkling wine is going to be something that's a little more higher or a little more high in acid, um, but it's a still wine, a Chardonnay and Pinot Noirs. Um, and then the Pinot Noir, we don't extract any color because there's no contact with the skins. A Pinot Noir grape, believe it or not, is red on the outside but white on the inside. Um, once, once we press, then we go into our cellar. And we will then fill up all these tanks. Um, 
and then let the first fermentation happen. After the first fermentation, we'll pull samples from each tank and determine which blend goes to what, being Brut, Blanc de Noir, etc. Um, obviously, we have some some cuvées that are uh, vineyard de designate, so those get separated right away, and that goes to its own designation. But the Brut Blanc de Noir is then blended. After blending, we'll do something what we call cold stabilization. We're going to bring the wine down in temperature, and that's going to pull all the tartrates out. And after that, we'll filter it. After the filtration, we do some checks on it in the lab, and once it's ready to go, we will start bottling. Uh, we just finished uh, bottling a lot of different cuvées here in the last couple of weeks, and we'll be starting again in two weeks with our brute and finishing with Blanc Noir by uh, beginning of June. So look forward for, we're looking forward to that. If you look in the light, you can see this is a bottle that's aging on TLIs right now, and you can see all the sediment laying at the bottom of the bottle. And what this is doing is the sediment, the, uh, there's yeast and sugar that we add in the bottle when we bottle. Yeast eats the sugar creating the natural CO2. And then when that yeast dies because it has no more sugar to feed off of, this is what's going to give the wine layers of complexity and layers of flavor. And so it's very important to age a wine for a minimum of four years to create all those flavors and layers of flavors. Um, and, that, and that's what the riddling process is going to do is to remove all of this. So we are in our sparkling cellar right now. Um, so we have some wines that have been discoursed, some wines that are being aged, some wines that are uh, being riddled, uh, like behind me. Um, so the process after bottling is the, the wine's going to go laid down, go through second fermentation in the bottle, and then age on the yeast, what we call entourage, for a minimum of four years. Um, and then once that's ready to go, we will put them into these cages, like behind me, and um, run a program that's a six-day program that's going to turn the bottles, um, 45 to 90 degrees and then up to the 4 degrees every 2 to 3 hours until the bottles are upright and what we're doing is all the dead yeast cells in the bottle is um, what we call sediment is going down to the neck of the bottle so we can then disgorge um, which will, will freeze the neck of the bottle, open up the bottle, the pressure in the bottle will shoot the ice plug out and we'll have crystal clear wine and then that's when we'll add our house recipes of, of dosage. Um, to bring you the lovely flavors that you enjoy in Iron Horse Sparkling Wines. Um, I'm going to show you an example of how the riddling machines turn, um, so if you bear with me for just one minute. The other way of riddling is also by hand. You can do it by hand. And you can show you the That's it. So every couple hours it's going to go through that process until, I, like I said, those pallets are upright and the neck of the bottles are facing down and all that yeast is going to come down to the neck of the bottle and then we'll go get into our next step of the winemaking process. Okay, my name is Jose Luis Briano, and I'm gonna really direct straight to the yeast going to the neck. Okay. This is the old-fashioned way. Are you doing a quarter of a turn or a half a turn? Quarter of a turn.
here we are starting to score, Dean. You can see right here the neck of the bottle. There's a nice cube right there. Um, it's going to get washed off. It's going to come over here. That first arm is going to open the bottle cap. The pressure of the bottle is going to shoot the ice cube out. You have crystal clear wine. The next step is going to be adding what is called Nickel d'Expedition, so dosage. Um, in this instance, we're doing rainbow cuvee, so the, uh, the specific uh, dosage for rainbow cuvee is being added. And once it gets that added, it'll go now to the corker. comes to the corker. And then after the cork, you'll get its wire hood to make sure that that cork doesn't pop out under pressure. Then the next step, the last step after disgorgement, is because their dosage is mostly sugar, it's a syrup, so the bottle needs to be mixed in order to get that uh, dosage blended in with, with the wine and marry the wine. So then after this, it's gonna sit in the bin for a minimum of four weeks before it gets labeled, washed and labeled and ready for um, uh, shipping. So it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, look forward to meeting you guys in real life very soon. So uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Tellement, tellement c'est bon